Welcome back guys. Now the next topic that we are going to discuss is about the mediastinal surface of right lung as well as the left lung. And uh, we are also going to see like what are the structures related to the mediastinal surface of right lung and left lung. And uh, when this image will be given in your exam, so you should be able to identify like which impression is uh, representing or it is for which structure guys. So please look at the screen there. Beautiful uh, image or beautiful pictures of a right lung and the left lung, the mediastinal surface. So let us deal with that comfortably guys. So I hope in this diagram you can easily identify this is the mediastinal surface of the right lung over here and this is the mediastinal surface of the left lung. One thing to begin this topic with is that okay, whether it is the right lung or the left lung, two structures will be common for both of them. That is your trachea and esophagus guys. So trachea and esophagus, they are exactly passing in the middle here. And that is the reason why the trachea and the esophagus are related to the mediastinal surface of right lung also as well as the mediastinal surface of left lung also. So try to make the things a little bit easy, applying a little bit of logic over there guys. So trachea and esophagus are related to both the lungs. So mediastinal surface of the right lung first of all, you can see this impression here is representing the esophagus here guys. Esophagus here. And similarly, as I told you, esophagus and trachea, both of them will be the same for left lung also. Even in left lung, this impression is the one which is representing the esophagus here. Perfect. And right in front of the esophagus, you are able to see like one more impression here. And this impression definitely in front of the esophagus has to be trachea only. So this is representing the trachea here. And similarly here also, it's not very that much clear here guys, it's very feeble impression there. So this one here in front of the esophagus, it has to be your trachea only. So that's the trachea. So whenever you are learning about the relations of mediastinal surface of the lung, don't panic there. First, try to make a simple logic. Esophagus and trachea will be related to both the lungs. Now once you are done with this one, try to recall already in the previous topic of root of the lung, I told you. Root of the right lung above that arching will be the azygous vein and root of the left lung arching above that will be the arch of aorta. Right lung, right lung, root of the right lung, arch of azygous and root of the left lung, arch of aorta. That is the reason why I am telling you repeatedly again and again in my videos, try to follow all the topics in the same sequence. There is a proper planning and uh, you can correlate every topic with each other guys. Now above the root of the right lung, this impression that you are able to see here is representing the arch of azygous. Arch of azygous. Now, if there is an arch of azygous present over here, now we know that the arch of azygous will actually go and drain where only? The arch of azygous will actually go and drain into the superior vena cava. That is the reason why definitely here you should actually have your superior vena cava. So that impression is actually representing you the superior vena cava. And try to recall from our previous classes and all, superior vena cava is formed by what? The superior vena cava is formed by right and left brachiocephalic vein. Right and left brachiocephalic vein will combine together to form superior vena cava. That is the reason why if you are able to see one impression just above this one, definitely that should be representing your right brachiocephalic vein. So that is how you have to easily deal the things one by one, sir. So it is on the right side, right root of the right lung, above that arch of azygous, that will go and drain into superior vena cava. Superior vena cava is formed by brachiocephalic vein. So that is how easily you will be able to guess or intercept all these impressions, guys. Now once you are done with the superior vena cava, right brachiocephalic vein, try to recall again, superior vena cava will go and drain the blood into which chamber of the heart? It is going to drain the blood into right atrium of the heart. So definitely below here, it has to be your cardiac area only. That big impression that you are able to see below here, it has to be your heart only there, present there. But to be more specific exactly which chamber of the heart will be there in that, that will be the right atrium. It has to be right atrium only. So that big impression is representing your heart over there and it has to be the right atrium of the heart, superior vena cava draining into right atrium only. And again the same thing, if you are able to appreciate one small impression here below, that will be the actual impression for inferior vena cava. Perfect. I think we have uh, found like all the impressions and their related structures in a very conceptual manner. Done. 
Now once you are done with that, I want to include like two more nerves here guys. One will be the phrenic nerve, another one will be the vagus nerve. Now first try to recall in your mind, vagus, the 10th cranial nerve, it is the longest one and it is going to begin from your brain and it is going all the way through the neck region and then the mediastinum, finally going to the abdomen. So it has to be there in the mediastinum and we have to find out where exactly is that one, number one. Number two, phrenic. Phrenic nerve, what is the root value of that one? It's coming from C3, C4 and C5. So even phrenic nerve is coming down. Now the important thing which I am trying to teach you here is that out of that phrenic nerve and the vagus nerve, keep in your mind, phrenic nerve is the one which will be actually going in front of the hilum or we can say in front of the root of the lung and whereas vagus nerve is the one which is going to go behind. That is something really important and for that reason only I am actually teaching you. So these two nerves are going to pass from here, we have decided that but one nerve is in front, one nerve is behind the hilum. Now which is in front of the hilum of the lung, that is phrenic nerve and behind the hilum will be the vagus. So there will be like one nerve which is going to pass in the front over here, that is phrenic nerve and there will be one nerve which is going to pass behind the hilum here and that will be the vagus, 10th nerve and this one here will be the phrenic nerve. Perfect. So that is about all the structures which are related to the mediastinal surface of a right lung. Now similarly, let us see all the structures related to mediastinal surface of left lung. Out of that already two structures, we have made it easy here guys, esophagus and trachea. Now the moment it is about the left lung, try to recall again from the root of the lungs, left lung root of that left, above that root what do you have? Arch of aorta. So therefore, what should you have here? What is this impression representing here, sir? The arch of aorta here. This impression is representing the arch of aorta. Now, if that is the arch of aorta, definitely it's coming from your heart. The ascending aorta, arch of aorta and then descending, it's coming from your heart. And which chamber of the heart? It has to be your left ventricle. That is the reason why this big impression, definitely the cardiac area only, it is representing your heart only there. But which chamber of the heart? It has to be definitely the left ventricle over here. So from the left ventricle, the ascending aorta, then the arch of aorta and descending aorta. Makes sense. Then again the same thing, the last and final thing that is left out here will be about the nerve. And I told you very clearly, the nerve which is going in front of the hilum, in front of the hilum will be the phrenic nerve and there will be nerve which is actually going behind the hilum here and that will be your 10th nerve sir, that's your vagus nerve, that's your vagus nerve. So in front of the hilum of the lung, it will be phrenic nerve and behind there will be vagus nerve. That's the reason why I kept like both the images simultaneously on the screen there so that you can compare and remember and I think if you are following all my topics in the same sequence, it is just a cakewalk guys, it's a very simple thing to understand, nothing difficult in that one but directly don't jump in learning about the relations of mediastinal surface of the lung, that is going to be more confusing. So better always following the sequence. That's all about the, all the structures related to mediastinal surface of both right lung as well as the left lung guys. Thank you, done. Now let's move on to the next topic here guys, very small topic that is thoracic duct and I hope you all know that thoracic duct is actually the largest lymphatic duct, the largest lymphatic one. For example, like in our body, let me give you a comparison here. We have got arterial system and the largest in that is iota. Similarly, we have the venous system and the largest in that one will be the vena cava. And similarly, the lymphatic system, the largest in that one will be the, uh, the thoracic duct guys, thoracic duct. Now, this thoracic duct is actually going to begin from where? Remember, the thoracic duct is going to begin from cisterna chile. And cisterna chile will be actually present in abdomen and in the abdomen at the level of L2. From there, the thoracic duct is going to begin. And after beginning from the cisterna chile, the thoracic duct will ascend up, first crossing the diaphragm and then further moving up and then it is going to shift towards the left side and then further moving up and again shifting towards the left side and then going and draining the lymph, okay. So that is the entire course of that one which I have shown you just now. Let me show you that in a diagram here, sir. So let's draw this simple diagram here and finish this off. So first of all, imagine this one here to be the cisterna chile. Now cisterna chile is actually acting like you know the lymphatic heart, heart of lymphatics, heart of lymphatic. Now from the cisterna chile in the abdomen, what is going to happen? Yes, the thoracic duct is going to begin from here sir. 
So this is basically at the level of L2. Levels are important here. That is what is being tested in the exams. Levels is important here, guys. So from here begins your thoracic duct. And thoracic duct is first going to ascend up. Ascend up. And then it is going to shift towards the or deviate towards the left side. And then further it is going to ascend up. And then it is again further going to deviate towards the left and drain the lymph finally, guys. Now, tell, let me tell you all the landmarks, the important landmarks that you have to actually remember. Now, remember this thoracic duct is first of all going to cross the diaphragm. And you have to remember which opening of the diaphragm and that to at which level. Thoracic duct is going to cross through the aortic opening of diaphragm aortic opening of diaphragm a recall from the topic of diaphragm there will be like three major openings and we remember that very famously as voice of america and voice of america stands for aortic opening and aortic opening will be at the level of t12 so this is happening at the level of t12 sir that is the second important landmark that you have to remember so number one beginning from l2 and number one it is uh, number two it is going to cross the diaphragm at the level of t12 via aortic opening now the next landmark that you have to remember it's deviating towards the left so at what level remember it is going to deviate towards the left at the level of t4 that's another land landmark so at t4 it deviates towards left deviate towards the left at the level of t4 then after ascending up further, it is again going to further deviate towards the left and finally it will go and open. It's going to open where? From the left upper limb, finally the blood is collected by left subclavian vein here. And from the head and neck, the blood will be actually collected by the jugular vein. And these two, the subclavian vein and jugular vein, these two are going to combine together to form brachiocephalic vein. It makes sense. Brachio, subclavian is from the brachium part, brachio. And jugular vein will be from the head and neck part, cephalic part. So that is why jugular together it is going to form your brachiocephalic vein. So this is left subclavian vein and this one will be the left jugular vein. Left jugular vein. And these two will combine together to form your brachiocephalic vein. That is the left brachiocephalic vein. And then, why I'm telling you about all these things here right now? Why? Because, remember, thoracic duct is exactly going to drain right at the junction of these two. Thoracic duct is going to drain at the junction of left subclavian vein and left jugular vein, guys. Okay. So, that is something very much important to make a note about and that has been recently asked, recently asked in FMG exam also. So, that is all about the thoracic duct. We have to remember the important landmarks one by one. So beginning from cisterna chile at the level of L2 and then crossing the diaphragm through aortic opening at the level of T12, deviating towards the left at the level of T4 and then further moving up and deviating and finally draining at the junction of left subclavian vein and left jugular vein. Perfect. And uh, we all know thoracic duct is the one which is finally going to drain the lymph from the entire body except for the right side of the body here, sir. Like exactly which part for example let us just draw a small diagram here head neck then imagine this one to be the upper limb here and then the lower limb here guys just a schematic diagram here and in this mark a line like this here guys i mean to say the red right side head and neck here and the right upper limb here and the right part of the thorax here that is the only part from where the thoracic duct is not going to drain the limb guys and from here, it is drained by the right lymphatic duct. A separate one that is a right lymphatic duct is going to drain the lymph from the right half of the head and neck part and the right upper limb, the right thoracic part and all. But otherwise, the entire body, from the entire body, the lymph will be drained by the thoracic duct. And I told you the important landmarks to be remembered here, guys. So this is all about the thoracic duct. You have to remember a small topic done in a conceptual manner. Sir. That's all done here, guys. Thank you.